we are off to go and do a lithography course with Simon Birder. He's a fantastic printer. And we are just strolling off to Oaks Fine Arts Studio, which is where we're going to be doing the course. Uh, beautiful spot here, obviously. Now, just going to make sure we find the studio complex is the main thing. Um, I've been here before, but I can't quite remember where it is. Uh, but yeah, he's going to teach us all about lithography, which is a really cool thing, which is a printing on a stone, essentially. So um, here we go. Let's have a little stroll around. Beautiful spot here in the summer. You've got these uh, lavender fields just uh, next door. Now, I think this might be it here. I can't quite remember exactly where the entrance is to the studio. I think it's probably there, I think. Oh yeah, this is, I think this is it. I can't quite remember how we get in. Studio 9. Which studio is it? Cannot remember which studio it is. Joe Sharp. Okay. Oh, maybe it's this one. Oh, sorry, which is Simon Birder's studio? It's just over there. It's just there, lovely. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Oh. Right, here we go, guys. We made it at last, amazingly enough. Oh. Come on, and the beast, the man with the movie camera, and the beast is here as well. Jurassic limestone. Um, so that means it's about 150 odd million years old. Oh, man. Um, Does it have fossils and stuff? Uh, it can do. And what makes it... Um, interesting for lithography is that it's particularly fine-grained and it has very few impurities in it generally it's a flat um, flat cleaving sort of um, sedimentary rock essentially so it naturally splits into flat slabs uh, when when it's quarried and um, uh, when when fossils are found in it, they are generally highly well, pre well preserved. So um, probably the most famous fossil found in it was the fossil of Archaeopteryx, which is the, the bird dinosaur. Oh, wow. You know, and That's they, so cool. They, they know that it, was, it had feathers because the feathers are preserved in the, kind oh. of in the fossil record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that quite recent they found it? Um, was to be honest, I'm not sure how long ago yeah. it was, but... Lots of different things have been found in, the, mm. in this um, rock. But um, it was being quarried for, long, for a long time before lithography came along. It was quarried for other things. But um, in the late 18th century, um, a man called Senefelder was looking into ways of printing his own um, plays. He was a young man who was... a budding actor and aspiring playwright and he wanted to basically publish his own play and he couldn't get anyone to do it and he didn't have any money and I think he was also a law student and he was um, struggling a bit financially and then his father died I think and he had to make money for his family who relied on him and um, he that's sort of the background of why he was looking into trying to find a way of making money, essentially. And he thought, well, if I can print my play, then produce it, then it'll be a way of making money. But in fact, um, printing is expensive, especially in those days, it involved metal and things. And he thought, well, what if I could use this locally available stone? It must be cheaper than metal, and there must be a way of using it to print from, which is what he set about uh, investigating. That's the story, and the story is that, uh, the kind of apocryphal story is that one day in his workshop he was um, uh, asked by his mother or somebody or to write down a laun it's either variably a laundry list or a shopping list, but he was asked to write down a list of something. He didn't have any paper handy to write it down, so he picked up a, a piece of waxy crayon and wrote it down on one of his bits of stone. No way. And then he noticed afterwards how the, uh, how the stone absorbed water and uh, the grease repelled the water where he'd written the laundry list. And um, it's an, a bit of an apocryphal story, but it, it makes a nice <laughs> one. <laughs>
I think the reality is slightly different, and um, he actually wasn't the first person to uh, think of using st- these stones to print from. Uh, a man called uh, Simon Schmidt um, had been experimenting with printing from the same kind of stones uh, about 10 years before, um, in around 1780-ish, something mm-hmm. like that. And um, he'd successfully made print- printed maps. Uh, I've seen example of one of a map of Africa for example but what he was doing was um, he was and what Senefelder the the known inventor of lithography was doing initially was they were trying to um, they were drawing on the stone with something that would be acid resistant essentially so they were thinking along the lines uh, for those of you who know a bit about etching they were thinking along the lines of a relief etching. So they were drawing or writing on the stone with, a, with a, an acid resistant material and then um, presumably building a, a wall of some clay or maybe something like that round the thing and then filling the, filling the surface with acid with the aim of etching the surface of the stone down so that the mm. writing or the drawing would remain standing in relief. And then they would ink it and print it like a, any other kind of relief print. But um, in fact, uh, what happened was that when Senefelder made his experiments in the same line, he suddenly did discover, did notice, that the greasy ink that he d- devised for doing his drawing and writing uh, not only resisted acid, but it also had an effect of creating an image in the stone anyway, which was that the stone absorbed the fatty material from the drawing from the drawing uh, medium, and uh, the rest of the stone, if it was dampened, would repel an oil-based printing ink, while the printing ink would stick to the place where he'd drawn and written things. So it didn't need to be heavily etched in order to be a higher and lower level. Mm. That was the principal thing he discovered. Mm. And then, of course, he was quite an entrepreneur, so he quickly set about uh, telling other people about this and sort of getting other people involved in um, actually, you know, what's the word, where you... um, scale something up you know he he wanted a scalable business in effect that, that would be and effectively it, it became an industrial process uh, on oh, a wow. large scale yeah. such that throughout the 19th century and well into the 20th century these stones would have been used for lots of commercial printing uh, an example of which i've got right here in fact which is uh, oh, wow. Look at that. ones i've been uh, i've acquired recently a whole bunch of stones which still have imagery on them which were printed in the 1930s last. Mm. So you could still print from that today. You, could you? possibly could, but mm. Uh, mm. and um, yeah, I've got a few other interesting stones later on. I can show you which have yeah. got uh, which have got old imagery left behind on them. Another one here, which actually I will show you because it's quite historic. Yeah. I discovered that I had. I didn't know this is what it was until I went to see uh, the Barnett Friedman exhibition at Pallant House Gallery about a year and a half ago. And this is actually uh, the original stone from which a piece of Barnett Friedman's design for a Christmas card in 1947 or 8. When this was a more um, industrial process, there were machines built which were sort of mechanical equivalents of this which were obviously not so manual but they still required a certain amount of manual uh, operation (laughs) so if anyone would like to try their hand at the this is called a levigator by the way a levigator nice levigator so cool so you're you're literally grinding away just have a go at It doesn't matter which hand you use, whichever whichever one you're comfortable with. The reason it's gone orange is because of the rust on the metal, not anything else. That quickly disappears. 
Uh, the grit does gradually break down, um, and it's most of it goes down the sink, the yeah. but it gets trapped in this big... Yeah. Oh god, it goes into nothing. Most of the grit goes in there, hopefully, not down <laughs> the drain. Yeah. And then every year or so I unscrew it and take it out and empty oh, really? it. And delevigate. And de degunk the box. Yeah. So I'll just put a bit more on. Is that just taking the ink off or is it actually... No, it's the... taking the stone off. No, it is. So It'll take the picture off and a small amount of stone with it. Oh, okay. And then you'll have a new. Surface. Then you'll have a new surface like this. Oh, okay. That's what we're doing. Oh man, you've done that to three make it of them like this. To get it ready, mm? haven't you? I've done it to three of these already to make you to mm. save you having to do it. Oh. Yeah. So how long will it take to do this? Well, have a go. You're not that long. It won't take long for it to disappear. It gets, it gets a, it gets a bit more sticky. You have to do it equally all over the whole you do, stone. Yes, you yeah. Do, yeah. So even right up to the edge corner yep, bit. Yeah. What is worth rem worth realizing is that this mud hmm. was last mud. Last time, 150 million years ago. Oh man, that's insane! <laughs> that's the isn't last it? time it was mud. That's insane. The, 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 the geology of this is that, in fact, at that time, that part of sort of central Europe um, was actually underwater. And it was a sort of inland series of um, lagoons or seas. And apparently they were quite sort of isolated and probably quite acid, but also um, uh, not much happened in them. They were quite dead. There wasn't much movement. So, and if, uh, so the movement of the water was very little, which meant that the silt of the, of the, which formed the stone just fell through to the bottom without being disturbed for, year, for, for, for millennia, really. And, um, and any animals that got into the water, fish and other animals that got in the water, tended not to last very long. They tended to die. But particularly, they, when they fell into the mud, because it wasn't moving, because there was very little movement of the water, they didn't get broken up like they would have done in other places. So they, their, their skeletons and their forms tended to stay very intact, mm. which is why this, mm. you know, they, were, they were just lying in the mud without being bothered for a long, 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 long time. So that's why the fossils are so good. Intriguing. But it's also good for lithography, which is that there are very, you know, there's not lots of other things in the stone mm. to distract you or mm. to prevent it from being suitable. So it's the combination of it being limestone, but also the fact that there are not lots of other things in it. Then they're basically sensitive to grease, so the, um, be careful of touching them too much, mm. unless you want to draw on them. Oh, I see, that's a... Look like him walking around with oh, an old, that's, yeah, that's an old piece of toast in his mouth. So, um, what I've done here is I've painted with gum arabic, which is this stuff. Well, actually, it's this stuff. Uh, this is some more gum arabic I'm making. Gum arabic is um, you can see, used a lot in lithography. Hmm. So this is in solution. It started off yes. Uh, couple of days ago as lumps and I put it with water and I'm just dissolving it slowly and later on we may be using this but if, if you want to put your finger in you can and you can feel the gum it's getting it's getting sticky hmm. intriguing do you know what gum arabic's used for painters might do ah oh, what would you use it for I don't know um, masking out an area relief it's a paint ingredient. Uh, mm. Well, for making paint. Mm. Oh, really? Oh, so it's like a. Yeah, I can't think of the name. Well, we call it. Come from originally gum. Gum. The gum. Aca the acacia tree. It's a, mm. and that's why you're getting it all sorts of bits and pieces, which are actually. Oh, it's actually bits of bits tree of, that are bits in there. Bits of tree in there. Mm. But. Um, Gum Arabic's it? used in lots of things. It's used in food, various food products. Yeah. Probably yeah. your, probably it's in your toothpaste. Oh man, um, that's in your toothpaste. 
if you like, uh, if you like, um, you know, you like uh, things like uh, wine gums or you know boiled sweets, oh, those yes. kind of things, mm. gum Arabic. Think of um, another thing. It's not so much the thing anymore because they're self-adhesive. But when did you last lick a stamp? Yeah, ages ago. Or the envelope to close the envelope. You were licking gum Arabic. It's receptive to grease. That's the key thing to realise. So when you draw on it, you're going to draw on it with things like this. And you're going to draw with... Um, I'm going to give you these, not those ones. Keep those separate. Things like this. So, whoops, we're going to draw with crayons like these, for example. So, in this state, it's receptive to grease. And why I'm coming back to the gum arabic is, if you paint gum arabic on, basically you block the surface of the stone and you can't draw on it anymore. So that's why I've pre-gummed the edges of the stone mm. to define areas where you will be able to draw. You, it doesn't, you don't, by the way, when you draw, you don't have to feel obliged to fill the whole of this space. That's up to you. But that's the maximum you can go. So if you draw on top of this, nothing will happen. Mm. This is a, a barrier against drawing. Yeah. All right? So anything you draw with a greasy crayon will become a mark that will print. So the stone has a fine grain uh, so that it can, can, it can pick up nuances of the crayon mark. So it might be that, you know, mm. the, the grey or the stroke of the crayon become, you know, becomes printable as it is. So it's very direct. Lithography is nothing if not direct. So it's all about, it's why artists were attracted to lithography in the first place when it became uh, a new invention other than, you know, differently from etching and lino cutting and wood cutting and all the things that uh, we are familiar with, perhaps. Um, lithography was the most kind of directly like drawing and painting. Oh, okay. Because it wasn't in negative. No. Yeah, yeah that's the thing. It is what it is. That exact, that exact stuff goes on that the paper. Stuff, not that stuff yeah. goes on the paper. The grease from this yeah. creates... Uh, areas of the stone which attract printing ink in exactly the same format, the same formation. So we won't actually be printing this stuff, we'll be printing with ink from what this stuff has done to the to the stone. It's weird, isn't it? So this is going to, it's also why Senefelder, who first invented this process, called didn't call it lithography, he called it, in German though, he called it chemical printing. Well, this is nothing to do with lithography, but it's to explain the difference a little bit. So this is an etching plate I made years ago, which, where the image is physically in the plate. So it's been eaten with acid to make places in the plate yeah. which trap ink. So you print from the, the what's called intaglio surface. So the in part of the plate is what prints onto the paper. Um, That's been exposed a few times, has it? Mm? That one's been exposed a few times. Well, it's been exposed to the acid a number of times because yeah, it has not depths. only lines, it has different depths yeah. of yeah, aquatint as well. Deep in it There's aquatint on here as, as well, which is a, a texture, basically. Yeah. So, it, but the point is the ink is trapped in the texture and in the lines. Yeah. And if you f feel with your fingers, you can feel there's a surface there. So on the paper it comes out a bit 3D, doesn't it? It can do, yes. Yeah. Right. The mm. ink almost sticks up sticks on the up. paper. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's being squeezed out of the lines onto the paper. In an etching press like we have next door. Oh, you've got an etching press next door. Yeah. Oh. So that's etching. A lino, which I can't show you because I don't know where I put my lino cut. Uh, that I sometimes get out, um, and wood, all those things, relief, sticking up, intaglio, etching, in, and then along comes this new technique, new kid on the block, lithography, which doesn't do in or out, or up or down, it's all on the same level. So this surface is always flat. Nothing is dug into it, and nothing is sticking up. It's entirely down to whether or not the stone has got a memory 
that is greasy, whether or not you've transfer is a kind of chemical alteration to the nature of the stone itself That's weird. that actually allows it to either pick up the ink or repel the ink so that's the one thing that you might if you, the thing to take away from today is to remember that really <laughs> so i'm going to keep the materials and options a little bit uh <coughs> sort of simplified today because yes, otherwise you'll be yeah. confused <laughs> and also uh, have too many cho too many choices um, and um, and also yeah. what does the litho bit mean? Like, what, what is the bit is simply referring to lithos the Greek for stone it's a bit like a pan of watercolour paint I suppose mm. so if you get it moving around with a bit of water and a brush. Found happiness. And then once this is active, uh, you can paint with it. So this is this is basically mm. glass. Nice. But if you take a more uh, suitable brush, so if you have a watercolor type brush, I mean you can paint with it like. So if you imagine you've got a watercolour box and uh, this is one of the colours in the little pans in your watercolour, this is acting more or less the same. You just wet it and dissolve a little bit of it, get it, act, get it moving. And then you can start painting. Put some gum Arabic on there. He's drying that, so um, that bit will be dry, yeah, and then on top sure of that, you can you place over the uh, like a splattery background. So whatever you put over the gum Arabic, <coughs> come out, basically. Oh, there's a couple more brushes. It's pure gum without any bits in, <coughs> um, and I'm going to measure this gum now. You're going to measure. So what we want is to make uh, what's called a gum etch. Yeah. You probably won't get this the first time, I certainly didn't. Yeah. Um, it took me probably at least a year before I even began to slowly understand what was going on. Mm. And I was doing it full time as a student. So I, don't, um, yeah. I wouldn't blame you if you didn't understand at all what was going on. No. <laughs> so what I'm doing is taking gum Arabic and I'm going to mix up about 20 millilitres. I like to have a, a regular amount of gum that I know where I am, where I am with it. And then, so that's approximately 20 millilitres of gum, which will be enough for at least two of these stones, I reckon. Yeah. And then, um, oh, it stuck itself to the table. Never mind. Doesn't matter. I'll do it there. So we take the gum and we're going to make it slightly acidic. Right. So this is right. gum, this is pure nitric acid. Well, really? right. when I say pure, it's seven, probably 70% nitric acid. So it's not quite pure. It's not 100%. And into that, we're going to drip some acid. So it becomes slightly acidic. And then that gets painted onto your drawings. And the um, type of drawing you've done to some extent, uh, will influence how strong or weak we make the etch. So this, I'm going to go probably for a medium strength etch, which will deal with probably all your stones, just to be quick and easy. Mm. But if I was being very particular, I might be careful to measure the amount of acid I put in the gum, depending on how I've drawn the stone. Um, but let's put approximately, I think, I think probably eight drops will be enough for this. So I tip this and it drips. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like eight. Like a natural flow That's time. pure nitric acid in there. By the time it's, if you drip this on your hand, you'd know about it. Oh really? Yeah, it's but hardcore. It would sting. Hmm. Uh, well, not straight away, but it would burn you in a bit. So I'm not going to get too complicated about different strengths of etch, but effectively what happens is the gum, as you already have 
uh, found out, goes on the stone and it kind of blocks the stone from receiving grease. So that you, some of, most of you have now exploited that as a method of drawing your image. So you've got layers of different tones, maybe you've been able to mask parts of your drawing out so that you can apply different techniques to other parts of the drawing, which I think nearly everyone's done. Um, and But here, the the gum has got additional acid in it, it's more acidic. So what's going to happen is when you paint this on, and I invite you to do this, just brush it on fairly generously and liberally in lots of directions. It's not only blocking the rest of the stone where you haven't drawn, mm. it's actually acting on the drawing a little bit. So the nitric acid helps to, um, helps with what we call um, the process which goes on now of saponification, if you like fancy words. The drawing material you've used is greasy, but it's also, um, it's, like, it's like soap. Okay. It makes the stone uh, have areas of soapiness. In, it's to do with the way that the um, acid works on the greasy material to convert the limestone. Don't ask me the chemistry. I need a bit more of a chemistry <laughs> lesson myself. Yeah. But there's a kind of chemistry going on there between the limestone, the grease, and the nitric acid. Intriguing. And it's helping the, the um, grease in the drawing material to develop um, a kind of m what I call a memory of where you've drawn, which is okay. going to be under uh, the drawing. That's so cool, isn't it? So, in lay, in lay terms, you can think of this as the as acidified gum is fixing the drawing. Oh, it's fixing the drawing, okay. Mm. If you want to take this, uh, take your turn and brush it on, do that, and then we'll pass it round and get them all painted. This is the French press, no way. French press, German press. Okay, that's sort of ready. Well, do a bit, right. there's a bit more to sort out on the presses to make nice. them ready to Inch print, press. but we can do that afterwards. So the first step is with your wet sponge and water, yeah, just wet. rinse the stone. So you can start off like this. I'll start it off for you and then get you to do it. It doesn't matter if you use quite a lot of water on it now. So make sure you rinse it down. Okay, you can do that, one of you. Okay. Uh, okay. You've got a bucket and sponge on each press so you no, can okay. get going on washing down the stone. Washing down the stone. Yes. You're literally washing, washing the off. gum that you put on before. Oh, it's off. the gum we're getting off. Cool. You're not trying to get the drawing off. At this yeah, stage. no, that's what I was... Just the gum. Yeah. Just the gum. So we take a piece of muslin like this. And I've got two or three bits like this. And you, you hold it in a, a pad. Okay. And you then buff the gum film down so it's thin mm. and dry. So that yeah. is a fairly thorough job no, sure you need fine. to do. Somebody can do that. Yeah. When you've uh, finished uh, putting the, when you've buffed it down enough, you can finish drying it off Tree, with a hand fan or a hair dryer. You, that's, that's your choice. There's one of these and there are two hair dryers. So make sure it's dry. Yeah. <laughs> it's like SOS, isn't it? <laughs> Make sure it's dry. This is the traditional uh, lithographer's hand fan. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah. Oh, check it out. This is... Um, How effective are they compared to a hairdryer? Uh, they're probably more effective. It should come off easily. Well, the picture? Mm hmm Or the gun? The picture. So the that, picture's going to go. The picture's disappearing now. Good. That's what's yes. meant to happen. Okay. Go on, Midget. So do you want to put it to go? Say au revoir, Pug. As I said, don't be alarmed. It's what's meant to happen. What well, I mean, is it meant to completely vanish, or just... it is? Oh, it is. Okay. It, we will see a bit of a stain, but you won't see very much if it's done properly. So those, those ones you've got with the images still on them, yeah, they they've got ink on them, which has been rolled on. Oh, since. okay. They've got the ink on them. They've they have printing ink or whatever. Yeah. The images disappear. Yeah. But yeah. the actual drawing has long since gone. Has long since gone. <laughs> Intriguing. Intriguing. So the original drawing material is only there 
for the purpose of establishing which is the printing area and which isn't going to be the printing mm. area. So it's, it's seeped into the stone? Yeah. 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 And that, all that business with the nitric acid in the gum arabic is part of the chemistry of converting the fatty parts of the drawing material mm. into fatty areas on the stone. Yeah. Paper above, but you can always so check it down afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. Really cool. Alright, yeah. wow. so that's your first one. Birthday birthday birthday. Really nice. We can do one or two more, even yeah. if you have to go. Yeah. I can and you can be, no doubt, you can get hold of your prints. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Get to arrange yeah. you to get them somehow. Yeah, no, that'd be great. I'm oh, sorry, we'd have to dash off. Yeah. No, I know. Well, it is. Yeah. So this uh, is ready to go, alright? Okay. So this goes down. This goes down. I'll do the first one because yeah, it's yeah. a bit scary. It really looks first. really frightening, yeah. huh? <laughs> okay, <laughs> you ready? Arm. This one's automatic. Yeah. Yeah. So this one you just press a button and it should work. Watch the blade of the tape and when it reaches there, you get it Oh, yeah, no. That's cool. And you can move back on its own because of clever mechanics. Yeah. And then you switch it off. Yeah, we'll yeah switch, switch it off. Yeah, that sounds like the main uh, thing. And then we take the lid off, as it were. <laughs> we have a look at the put. Let me see what we've done under there. Not, yeah, let's have a look. It may be rather pale. Don't be surprised if it's very faint. But what okay. first one often is. Oh, no, it's oh, not so yeah. faint. Not bad. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's cool. So there is the pod. That oh, is so that cool, man. <laughs> it's really cool. That is really it's cool. Really good. Okay, it's not too wow. faint. Fantastic. That's not bad for first proof. Yeah. I would expect yeah. that to build up with a bit more inking and printing to build up to fully inked and fully printed uh, black and white image. Bomb buckler.